disconnected in the middle of a, uh, an honest, real conversation. Usually. You said you were trying to make a joke. You also, didn't you, know that. You, you didn't can know see, that. You can see where I have to go to, to, to reconnect things. Um, but you didn't any, know that. If any one of us is pulling shenanigans with technology, is it really me? What, is, with it, tec with is, is it? With technology? Yes. You, are you calling a candy dish technology? <laughs> Was, you put the candy dish. candy dish. That's not technology. The phone is technology, though, right? You, you recognize that? I can't believe. I can't believe that that got you. Are you telling the story now? Go ahead I and tell the story. I don't remember the story. We, we were actually doing a, a, a camera test for uh, for you to start doing video shorts, and you're like, "My camera is not working. I don't understand what's time, wrong." Wasn't it? Like yeah, because the first time you just held your thumb over it, so I had video but no audio, and then you did it again. Um, but but the the phone was was uh was was now in portrait instead of landscape, and you asked me how I knew that if it was blacked out, um, <laughs> because of the resolution of the video. And then the third time it was all pixelated and whatnot, and you said I didn't understand it because you were shooting the video through a candy dish, <laughs> and these are hours of my life that I'm not going to get back. Oh, in your uh, life, you know how long it took me to do it. Not long, <laughs> and on it is minutes of my life. But like I've told this story so many times now that it's hours because uh, I don't want anybody to think too highly of you. No, there's no reason for that. Yeah, the candy dish. So it's so simple. It's so simple, but it was so effective. But elegant. Yeah, that's actually. I mean, that's like that's you had you, no idea what happened with that. With, the, with no, the, I, that with one. I was I was flummoxed about. <laughs> And that's not a word I run to immediately. <laughs> like I see shapes and colors. I don't know what you did with your phone, man. I have no idea. Did you drop it? Yeah. <laughs> or all the pictures of your kids just <laughs> kaleidoscope images? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, man. Hi, kids. A... We're the uncultured saints. I don't have a Bible in front of me. I just had to lean forward awkwardly to get mine. Oh, We're on top yeah, of things. I kind of do. I got an NIV version. You're going to be doing most of the reading. Go. What? <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going <laughs> to ask questions. We're not going to. We're going to judge a little, but we're not going to ask questions. No judge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're picking up in Mark uh, chapter 9. Um, after six days, Jesus took with him, being Jesus, Peter and James and John, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified, and a cloud overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they saw no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. As they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until they had until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead might mean. And they asked him, why do the scribes say that first Elijah must come? And he said to them, Elijah does come first to restore all things. And how is it written of the Son of Man that he should suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written of him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so the transfiguration. This one is in um, Matthew and Luke and, and Mark, and it's a little bit different in, in every every single account. And that's good because it sort of lets us see the different perspectives that are shining through here. But it's also sort of a place where it's it's important then to recognize where there are differences. It's not sort of people messing up, but actually trying to, to highlight different things that are going on. Um, so right. especially as we have like the Mark and Transfiguration, sort of ignoring the other two, um, because I, I kind of tend to favor the Matthew one. It, it was it was fun for me to dive into it. Um, what what did you see that was kind of cool? I are you talking about the Mark specific one? Or yeah, the Mark other? specific I did, I, one. Um, but there, uh, I like the Luke's version. Can we just do Luke's version? No, we're on Mark. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, yeah, let's get into it. I mean, obviously you're setting up that because you have something cool that you saw. Um, no, I don't. But, I was hoping you the, did. I mean, with what you said. a short podcast. <laughs> really short. Like like what you said, uh, uh, 
You know, it is interesting to hear the different perspectives. And I, I always like to use the example of the car accident at the intersection with, with three different or four different people at each scene. I talk the, about a kid's birthday party, but like to each their own. I go traumatized. A little more, little more grisly. Yeah. <laughs> but Bear each person, attack happened. <laughs> each person is going to give different details, but they, they're, they're describing the exact same car accident or birthday party, whatever the case may be. Um, with, with, uh, the, with a, never mind. The one that I like uh, with with Luke, the thing that I like is is he's the one who tells us what the uh, conversation is, and the other guys don't. Um, mm-hmm. And again, that's not to say that uh, like they didn't know, like Matthew didn't know or Mark didn't know after talking to Peter, because a lot of people think Mark's gospel is Peter's gospel. Just mm-hmm. Mark was the transcriber. It's not like Peter didn't tell him or anything. Like, um, but it's Mark is not only is he writing down a history, and that's what these gospels are but they're histories for particular reasons and there so there is there's themes and and theology that that each gospel writer through the inspiration of the holy spirit is trying to get across here right and so a lot of what mark is trying to get across is a little bit different than than what luke is why mm. are you smirking i'm still thinking about a birthday party compared to a car accident <laughs> all right so what did okay so what did you find interesting so I, it's the stuff that's missing to me because like that, that means that the, the sort of the usual tropes that I want to go to in the transfiguration don't necessarily apply. Um, and, and so you don't know, like in Luke, that they're talking about the exodus of Jesus, um, right. that they're talking about him, him going off to the cross. Uh, in uh, Matthew, you have immediately before this, like the chapter before is John the Baptist being called by name, Elijah, who would has come again by Jesus for those who have ears to hear. And it's always left me wondering whether or not the the person seen as Elijah in the transfiguration actually was John the Baptist, but like reheadified because of Matthew. Because, well, if you have ears to hear the chapter before in Matthew, John, who was just beheaded and everybody's mourning the fact that he is just beheaded, they go, they retreat because of it. And then they go up on the mountain and then they see Elijah come again. I just, I've always wondered whether or not this could be John the Baptist, which would cause much rejoicing to the people who are mourning his death, but, but you don't have that either. So let's maybe set that aside and, and actually focus less on sort of the details of Moses and Elijah and, and maybe just more on the person of, of Christ. You, you also don't have Jesus' face uh, shining like the sun, only his, his clothes in Mark. Um, it, it's Spartan to say the least, but at, at the same time, um, I want to I wanna fix on the word rabbi that, that uh, Peter uses. Okay. In regard to Um, almost any time somebody calls Jesus rabbi, they're about to get something wrong. Um, Not not all the time, but almost every single time somebody calls him teacher, it's usually just because they can't call him Lord yet for whatever is going on. So here's something interesting, and I I don't want to blow up the whole thing because I didn't know until I was actually like reading commentary. So it's not like I'm smart and know this of myself. But (laughs) don't worry, you have to set the stage. No, I'm setting it. also, because if I'm wrong, then it's commentary's fault. Uh, um, okay, set the stage. But but the commentary was saying, and kind of like the, the, the textual parts before the commentary itself, so breaking Look down how different, fancy you different are. words. You read the whole thing. <laughs> right. Um, was uh, the term rabbi, it was was used first century, was used quite a bit during during that time that mm-hmm. Mark is writing this. and and, and But it isn't until... Or, or it's not definitive whether or not it's uh, at that time or later where rabbi is actually heard as teacher. Um, but it's it's more a um, kind of a, uh, a a term of uh, a, a it's great, an honorific a great deal of honor that you're giving someone. Mm-hmm. So it, it's not, and then late, because of that, then the the individuals who are going around teaching and had disciples would get that term and then it kind of morphs into just almost purely a teaching sort of understanding. Right. But even if you just sort of give it the honorific, um, this is actually what we just got done talking about, uh, that, that who do people say the son of man is? Is he one of the prophets? Is he one of the, the ones worthy of honor? Is he, is he just sort of another one? Um, there, there is a difference between Lord, between son of man, between son of God and even just sort of esteemed prophet. Um, right. But and, Peter got it right. 
last and time? then almost immediately it's it's a Got i think a, a fun thing like the first thing he wants to do up here uh because again like if we're just going to build three tents and stay up here where are we not gonna go to the place where you just got chastised for telling the Lord not to go. Don't go. Um, and even as they, they come down the mountain, they still don't understand. Like, what do you think this resurrection thing actually is? Um, th- there's there's a struggle to to comprehend and understand that. And, and that's that's not to belittle the apostle, um, but but rather to sort of recognize that that this side of glory, even the believers are gonna sort of struggle to get their heads around these things. No, I think you're absolutely right, and and that's the interesting thing too, because I mean. We even have a hymn, right? That that mm. quotes what uh, what Peter's saying. Um, it's it, "Tis good Lord to be to here, be here." Yeah, right. And I always kind of heard that. And again, I, I <laughs> say the exact same thing as Peter would. Right? I, I would I would see this. It would be a great thing that's happening, an mm-hmm. awesome thing that's happening, and yet I'm terrified, right? Because I blah, like this is this is. Uh, uh, the, the Jesus, uh, the Son of God in His humanity, but uh, but shining through with almost all of His divinity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which has got to just be a terrifying, a, a terrifying thing to see. But obviously, you're going to say, "Tis good, Lord, to be here. Uh, let's stay here forever." Um, and yet, I don't know. I got to feel for Peter because it's got to be like this. I don't think he's an idiot. I think he's a normal person. Um, uh, that doesn't know what to say. I think Mark even uh, uh, says as much um, mm-hmm. and is, is wanting two things at once. I want to stay here for the rest of my life, but I'm terrified uh, of what's happening. And maybe I don't, but I, I, I should probably say that I do. Right. But I mean, also this is still the prayer reflected by every Christian. And, and this is where I, 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 again, just sort of gravitate towards Mark because so many times in, as, as we're dealing with these texts, I, I find myself echoing it. I want to behold God only according to his power. I, I want I want the, the fancy miracle. I want the great healing. I want money. I want idolatry stuff. Uh, but, but like, show me how cool you are, God, and then maybe I won't doubt so much, and then maybe I won't hurt so much. Do fancy stuff. Let me behold you in your power. And then the sky talks at Peter, and he's so overwhelmed by by perceiving God in all of his power, uh, along with the, the prophets uh, who have gone before him, uh, along with the victory over the grave that has gone before him. Uh, because even if it's not John the Baptist, Elijah was taken up. And there's there's even a little bit of contention over whether or not Moses was taken up too um, because of a, a, an odd little verse in Jude. We can we can come back around to it. What? But I'm serious. We'll, we'll, we'll circle back. Um, but... Um, I, I think sort of that the recognition that the, the only way you're actually going to perceive Jesus in a way that's actually comforting is not according to his power, but according to his mercy. Uh, it's lifting up their eyes. They saw no one but Jesus only after this. And they get to go back down the mountain with something that they can hang on to, even if they don't have their heads all the way around it because of, of object permanence. Um, it, it, it says there appeared to them, Moses and Elijah, and, and appeared means something. Uh, appeared means not just like spraying into existence, but then suddenly you could see it. Um, so like there appeared a Bible. It's not gone. I'm not making stuff up now and then springing to existence the Bible. It, it means that to to be near Jesus is to be near with um, all of the company of heaven, angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing the liturgy. Uh, it, it, it's to, to be near Jesus is to be near the true God whose robes dazzle white, who who makes the sky talk. Uh, but to, to be with God according to his mercy chiefly in the cross, we, we receive all of these things. We go to communion and receive all of these things. And it's actually at a place where we can find comfort. And, and I want both. Yeah. I, I want the God I can actually receive, but but still there's no small part of me that's like, okay, now do cooler stuff than this. <clears throat> right. I mean, there's so much that we could, so many different ways that you can go about the transfiguration. Uh, mm-hmm. Oftentimes, uh, I mean, I like the fact that it, Obviously, if you're in the one year, but even if you're in the three year, you do get to preach on the transfiguration every single year. And I think you probably should be able to because there is so many different avenues that you can go with this. Um, right. uh, whether Peter, uh, it is good to, to be here, is it? Y- yes. Is it really? <laughs> no. Like it's right. it's it's both. And it's it's um, how does how does that even work? And, and then the whole it, Jesus only. That's all that they see. Uh, it's so many different things. But. Yeah, is it good for 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 Peter to be there? Kind of, um, but but Jesus, like, he needs to go down to that cross. 
Mm-hmm. And and so with the father, the sky talks, when the father speaks out of the clouds, right? As the clouds overshadow, much like Old Testament illusions of a tabernacle and temple, right? Holy of holy sort of thing, mm-hmm. where you have the divine presence there. Hint, hint, wink, wink, Peter. Um, that, uh, yeah, this is, this is my son, right? Listen to him. Mm-hmm. Um, listen to him about what? Oh, we're going to hear about that in just a second when we have, you know. Also, we just know. heard about yeah. it, like we right before they went up there. And we're going to hear again about, uh, you know, his cross and passion. Maybe maybe you should listen to that sort of stuff. And then to another of your points uh, where you said, um, I, I, I'm I just like Peter. I want to stay up there. I want the I want the God of the cross, but also I want the, the God and all of his power. And then the God of all of his power shows himself and what that power really means in front of a sinner. And it's terrifying. Mm. And I actually fall on my face. And I, 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 in order to see and receive the God and all of his power, I can't be a sinner. And at this point, I mean, I've been forgiven of all my sin, but uh, before uh, until the, the second coming, um, I'm not going to be uh, freed from this body of death of mine. Um, and so uh, it's it's that tension of everything. But I think Peter and kind of what you alluded to <clears throat> kind of points forward to something that we're going to hear. Obviously not this week, um, but next week uh, with the healing of a boy and an evil spirit mm. and uh, the dad um, and ba- the, 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 the crux of that whole pericope right there is um, is when the dad says, uh, the Jesus, if you're able, uh, you can heal my son. And Jesus says, uh, if. I, all things are possible. Um, and the guy says, uh, I believe that 100%. Um, also. <laughs> also, I don't. Yeah. Um, and so please help my unbelief because I, yes, I hear your words and I believe you 100%, but I'm doubting every step of the way. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's also, I mean, there's, again, the transfiguration, it's beautiful because um, not only you get a chance to sort of ruin somebody's favorite hymn somewhere, uh, which I'm sure you said I have to do every time you preach a, a no, sermon. No, no, that's not true. That's it's not actually fair. a good hymn, too. No, time out. No, it's not. It's not? I don't like I'm it. I'm thinking of a different one? It's nobody's favorite hymn. Okay, that's fair, too. <laughs> All right, so um, I, I, I want to... <clears throat> I want to pick apart a little bit more when they come back down the mountain, though, um, because this is one of those places where Mark is truly unique. Um, the way that they speak about Elijah, we we can unpack Moses, uh, who who may or may not have, but probably wasn't assumed into heaven, but might have been. Um, but hear about God burying him. So yes, uh, but nobody knows where. And Jude, uh, Jude talks about Saint Michael and the devil contending over the bones of Moses, and oh, so the there's bones. there's a yeah, so there, there's a remnant as to, to where the bones then taken up. Um, I, I don't particularly believe it, but um, it, it's a place where you start to recognize that uh, what you have at the Transfiguration probably speaks more to that Jude verse than the other way around. But when you have then a person who is dead and then not dead anymore, but also recognizable, that that speaks something for us going forward. Um how, it's not like, you know, uh, they, they, they were wearing name tags. Hi, my name is Elijah. Hi, my name is Moses. Uh, Moses might have been like holding two tablets so that everybody would have recognized it's him, but that that probably would have got heavy after a while. How do they know it was him? And and is there actually a comfort to, to be found in the fact that the whole company of heaven is wherever Jesus is? Uh, that's a That to me is a, a great comfort. I'm sorry, I'm reading uh, Tis Good Lord to Be Here. Okay, bash it. Do it. I'm thinking of a different hymn then, or I'm a bad theologian. Either way, no. have some fun. Go. No, 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 do it. Do it. Do no, it. no, 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 no. Keep going with what you're doing, and then I'll come back to that. No, I, I was no. I already I did my thing. I was hoping I you would build off of it. Maybe we could have some, some, you know, jovial conversation, or at least like an obscure '90s reference. No, but continue, continue, and then I'll continue. jump right in. Continue is what happened with, in the arcade game after you died in Double Dragon. And you had four more quarters in there. Um, <laughs> Dumble Dragon. That's I how love that game. It was great. It was glorious. <clears throat> no, I'm no, sorry. Well, what, what were you saying? What were you saying? There's a comfort to be found in, in the fact that all the company of heaven is wherever Jesus is. That that uh, to to commune then is uh, where Jesus is, even though he he's perceived less than all glorious. Uh, still, it is 
there with all the company of heaven. When when you commune, you commune with your grandma who fell asleep in Christ. You you commune with Moses and Elijah. You you, you take communion then with a victory over death that is a palpable, joyful way. You know, I've never. I don't think I've ever uh, understood the transfiguration from that perspective. I mean, I get what you're saying with, with the, you've got Elijah and Moses and it's clearly Elijah and Moses Mm -hmm. um, and nobody, you know, it's not Jesus. At least we don't have the gospel writers telling us uh, Jesus saying, Hey, Peter, this guy's Elijah. If you, in case you didn't know. Right. Right. Um, so obviously they do have this recognition of them uh, and who they are. So that, that is, yeah, no, that's interesting. Again, I've just never taken it from that perspective. I, and I've never heard a, a hymn, sorry, a sermon spoken in that way. Have you done that? Yeah. Have you done a transfiguration on like the, uh, the uh, 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 other side of the circle of the communion rail? Yeah. hundred percent. Better passion than well, I because like also you you have to deal with the, the reality of what communion looks like too. Because like lifting up their eyes, they saw nothing but Jesus only, and and that's boring Jesus. That's not glow in the dark Jesus. That's not float in the air Jesus. That's not the sky talks Jesus. That that seems to be the lesser Jesus. Um, but that's the one that they can actually receive for their good. And in the same way, you look at communion. You look at what it is, and it looks like a cheap cracker and a guy in a dress, and that seems disappointing compared to the God we actually want to behold, but that's the one you can actually receive for your good. Yeah. You should have just done this Bible study by yourself. You're talking it out of part. <clears throat> well, well, but you were looking up a hymn to make fun of. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. Also, barely, my dog Goob came down here to I'm see me. And so that's pretty singles good. And you're just hitting homers. Uh, hold on. I got to read the, the last, the, the last stanza here. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. This up is, this Did you say Sisyphus? Um, Sisyphus is not in this hymn. <laughs> he pushed a rock up a hill. <sighs> Tis, okay, I'm sorry. I don't like this hymn. Okay, why? It doesn't talk about the cross at all. Oh, that's a great reason. That That's a pretty great reason. It doesn't. Like, it says, like, right? It says, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm hearing it wrong. For, stanza three. And I can do this as public, public domain. Um <laughs> Fulfiller of the past and, and hope of things to be, we hail thy body glorified at our redemption see. Yeah. That's a communion hymn. I don't think that's a communion is. hymn. I don't think that's what Joseph A. What Robinson meant, is going for. Probably not. You, <laughs> I really don't think that's what Joseph, Joseph... I don't know Joseph A. Robinson. I don't know where he is uh, uh, theologically, but I don't think that... Because everything else... Um, before we taste of death, we we see thy kingdom come. We long to hold That's the vision hymn. bright and make this hill our home. That's a communion hymn. No, it's not. I know it's not, but that's a communion hymn. No, no, yeah. it's 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 this guy Robinson uh, uh, retelling the transfiguration story and yeah, just say, like, yeah. What yeah, if we put we, a fourth tent for we, me? Yes, that's <laughs> what he's saying. I right. know. And then he say, that is the fifth stanza. It's, tis good, Lord, to be here, exclamation mark. Uh, yet we may not remain, but since thou bidst us leave the mount, come with us to the plain, which is good. But mm. to where? The cross. Yes, just come just on. Say just, it, just cross say doesn't it. rhyme with it, though. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> just say cross. Cross just, doesn't rhyme. Why does G? Why does it? See, and this is okay. This why is why does cross go. rhyme with plain? <laughs> no, it does in some language. I'm sure. What? <laughs> what I am uh, the way that I usually go with with the is preaching the transfiguration. My my congregation is probably getting bored with me with it. But uh, is is the fact that. We want – it's kind of how you, you put it earlier, right? We want, uh, we, we want the theology of glory, even mm-hmm. though the sinner can't, can't stand it. Right. Just by nature can't stand it, but that's what we want. And we want to be able to – okay, how can I stand it? How can I get to the point where I'm able to stand in this president, presence of the glory of God in all of his divine majesty and not tremble with my face in the dirt? Mm-hmm. The only way that we can ever get there is at the cross. 
right? The only way that that could ever be a reality for us is if Jesus goes down, right? And says, hey, by the way, uh, don't tell anybody what you saw up there uh, because you guys don't have a clue as to what it means. Wait until after my death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. And when I come back and I spend 40 days with you to explain all of this, and then you'll finally understand it. Then please go out and tell everybody about it. Uh, but until that point, keep your mouth shut because you're going to say it wrong. Right. This is why seminarians should not have Twitter accounts. I, I'm, I'm all the way with you. <laughs> but, uh, this is why most pastors should have seminary uh, Twitter you, accounts. <laughs> you're not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's one other reason. Yes. Uh, so they, <laughs> they go back down the mountain. Um, are you ready to, to kind of move on to this part? Let's do it. There's there's this thing that that's unique here. Um, it's it, it's not just think goob. Uh, so they kept this matter themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead might mean. And they asked him, "Why do the scribes say that first Elijah must come?" And he said to them, "Elijah does come first to restore all things. And how is it written that the Son of Man that he should suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come." And they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written of him. And so you have that sort of illusion there that uh, the things they did to Elijah um, was John the Baptist, because Elijah, the prophet, was taken up. He 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 was not actually left alone to to deal with his enemies. He he was not uh, abandoned on the mountain where he just wanted to eat a cake and die. Um, he 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 made it, but John didn't. But they, right. it's it's this whole um, Elijah restored all things that I want to sort of play with a little bit okay go for it because uh, yeah it's confusing to me mark is confusing to me the other two gospel writers aren't aren't yeah, straightforward I, I had to spend a little bit of time on this before we recorded honestly because it, it was it was a place where i don't like going um but i actually then want to fall back on what it is that john the baptist did um it, it was make straight the way of the lord it was make the uneven places plain he preached the gospel he baptized yeah. people like this is the restoring of all things that we don't actually want to deal with. Like even clergy, like I read this, like, no, he didn't. Um, but he was out there preaching the forgiveness of sins and baptizing people into the resurrection. And, and I was like, yeah, but that's not restored. Like if it was restored, it'd be better. Um, right. And and so we have a, a now and not yet very much at play here uh, where, where John the Baptist did restore all things and restored looked like martyrdom for John. And, and the Christ will still have to suffer many things. And all of those things are connected that the, the restoration that John the Baptist is bringing out is not simply you get your best life now, uh, but, but rather that, that Jesus is going to die for you and you're going to be united to him in this death. And some of you uh, might even be taken up. Some of you might be alive at the last great day. Um, and some of you might die martyrs and everywhere in between. But if you are baptized into the suffering and death of Christ, then you're already restored regardless. <clears throat> no, it's beautiful. I love it. Um, CPH's uh, Concordia commentary, the big blue ones. Um, mm. Belts has two interesting things. I, I think I alluded to this at the end of last last week. That um, uh, chapter one, uh, sorry, uh, John chapter nine, verse one, uh, where it says, uh, "I tell you the truth: some of you are standing here who will not taste death before they see, they see the kingdom of God come in power." Right. And that's the transfiguration. Is is his point of view? Mm. Which I, I that's interesting. I'm like, huh. oh man, okay, that huh. makes sense. Okay. Uh, okay. Or, or, or I, I could see that. I could yeah. see that. Right. And it's like some of you will not. <clears throat> oh yeah. By the way, uh, Peter, James, John, come on. We're gonna, yeah. I'm going to show you. Um, <clears throat> so that's interesting there too. Um, but then he another neat thing that he does, and I had never really thought of this before, um, because I had always thought of not that I'm smart, but because I think, like you said, Matthew is the one who Jesus explicitly says John the mm -hmm. Baptist, Elijah. Nah. Um, but here you've got, you hear in verse 12 and verse 13 about Elijah, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, if I'm reading it right, Vel says, uh, verse 12 is uh, John the Baptist, verse 13, Jesus is talking about himself. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is... Mm. They will also... Right. Right. Yeah. I tell you, Elijah has come, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they have done to him everything that they wished just as it is written about him. Well, not a whole lot is written about John in regards to his suffering. Um, no. A whole, lot, a whole lot is written about Jesus. 
about it. Right, but most of what they clung to for Elijah was that he was going to set the kingdom right. I, I mean, this is why everybody right. was looking for Jesus to be the next Elijah, that that he would come and and fix all the pol- tol- the, all the problems of politics. Um, yeah, I'm talking real hard. <laughs> <laughs> Got ahead of myself there. Uh, <laughs> thanks for making faces at it. Oh, sorry. But, but, you didn't mess up once. You messed up like three times. <laughs> it was, I did my best. Uh, <laughs> They, they were looking for the Elijah, though, that, that would not be the Elijah who suffers. I, I think that's maybe the stuff that actually should be written about, though, um, that the, the connection to these writings uh, is not a, a worldly kingdom that, that was being proclaimed, even in the Old Testament, when, when the, the people were looking for Elijah to, to return. Right. Right. Yeah, there's so much that we don't have time to get to. I mean, there's so so much. There's the, the cloud. There's the fact that Elijah and Moses were both on... The cloud of the Old Testament, I'm sorry, of the mountain with the Old Testament and the cloud coming upon them. And there's just so much that mm. it's so deep. I, yeah, guys, go ahead and read, read all three accounts. They're really neat. Kind of compare and contrast. And I don't know. Next, uh, next Transfiguration Sunday, uh, maybe uh, give your, uh, give your pastor a uh, kind of a heads up. Be like, hey, I'm actually going to listen to you this Sunday. Tra- do, a, no, do a better job. No, but but Transfiguration, you'd be like, hey, Transfiguration Sunday's coming up, Pastor. Uh, Bible study? Could we like do a yeah. compare and contrast of the three? Ooh. No. Fun. That'd, That'd be, be a good fun. time. You know what else is fun? Teaching kids about the Gospels by using the analogy of, of a horrible car crash. Thanks be to God. It's fun. You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org/giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman.